Hey everybody, Dr. Hill here at Advanced Animal Care Berea, and today we're going to be talking about some dog allergies. Great. So, Dr. Hill, how common are dog allergies? Uh, more common than a lot of people realize. Um, so, I would say at least... 60% of the dogs that we see come through our practice have some sort of allergy to a whole, you know, there's a whole slew of different things that they can be allergic to, but we, we see quite a few come through. Actually, Moogie here has allergies himself. Oh, poor Moog. <laughs> so, what are some common dog allergies? Um, so, the the biggest, you know, things that we are kind of the big three t sections of allergies that I, I like to think about are going to be allergies to food. And most commonly, that's the protein source of the food. So, chicken or beef or pork, being allergic to that. Um, the next kind of section is being allergic to ectoparasites or, um, you know, parasites that can live on the pet. So fleas or ticks or even being allergic to mosquito bites, um, things like that. And then the last one kind of falls under what we call like an atopy or an environmental allergen. So maybe it's the grass outside or pollens from the tree or flowers in the yard, or maybe it's even stuff like dust in the carpet or maybe there's mold behind the walls or things like that that can trigger some allergies in these guys. Great. So um, how do allergies impact the health and well-being of my dog? Um, so the biggest thing that owners notice is the itching and they're up all night with their dog because they are just itchy, itchy, itchy. Um, maybe some of the allergies present as ear infections, so they're shaking their head a bunch. Um, you can even have allergies present in the form of like hives. So they've got welts or res red raised areas. Um, sometimes they're chewing their fur out and that causes a secondary skin infection. So they've got some hair loss. Maybe they've got some lesions that are oozing or some red bumps. Um, there's a ton of different ways that allergies present. And the, and the biggest thing is trying to figure out what's possibly causing them and then managing them to keep the pet comfortable because that keeps your sanity in check. So could I diagnose my dog's allergies at home? Um, so sometimes yes, sometimes no. Um, so let's say you gave your dog a new brand of treats and they decided to have some vomiting or diarrhea or they broke out with hives on their skin then that's probably a good indicator that something in that in that new bag of treats caused an allergic reaction in your pet. Um, of course, things like bee stings would fall under the allergic, you know, reaction category. Um, but sometimes there's some trickier things to diagnose too that are really better diagnosed at your vet's office. So how will a vet diagnose allergies in my dog? Um, so there's definitely some testing out there that's available, um, but a lot of times it's a diagnosis of exclusion, you know? So we're looking to see, making sure that there's no evidence of fleas on your pet, um, or looking for, you know, the cause of the ear infection, or did we change food recently, or is there a, you know, are we moving into a new season? Did we move from winter to spring? Because sometimes that can trigger allergies in pets too. Um, so it's kind of like being a big detective and trying to put together all of the puzzle pieces. And that's generally what we tend to do here. And then if more diagnostics are needed, then we can definitely recommend those. And, and there's several different that we can do on that front as well. So how are dog allergies treated using anti-inflammatory therapy? Um, so my favorite anti-inflammatory therapy is actually going to be omega-3 fatty acids. Um, and the nice thing about omega-3 fatty acids, they are over the counter, but they're kind of like my favorite general supplement because they're natural anti-inflammatories for the pet. Um, cause really 
what we do want to make sure is is with these allergic responses um, they're causing some sort of inflammation either in the skin in the ears um, if it's a food allergy sometimes it's in the gastrointestinal tract and what we do want to do is get that inflammation under control because if you think about skin, it's kind of like bricks and mortar. And so it's a nice solid wall when it's intact, but what that inflammation does is it crumbles out the bricks and mortar, and that's what leads into like secondary bacterial infections or secondary fungal infections. And so um, my favorite, like I said, are these omega-3s. There are some medications um, out there that are anti-inflammatories that can definitely help too, but, but my favorite are these omega-3s because they're all natural. Great. So how is shampoo therapy used for dog allergies? Yeah, so shampoo therapy is great because if the allergen that's tricking your dog is maybe, let's say, some grass or some pollen or some dust that's getting on their coat, not only does the shampoo therapy get those allergens off of your pet just, you know, to hopefully stop the triggering response, um, but we do have a lot of shampoos available to us that have... Um, so this is like a general all-purpose shampoo that's hypoallergenic. It's got ceramides in it, so it kind of helps restore that mortar and the brick and mortar that makes up the skin. But then we also have shampoos that have specific medications in them too. So whether that be uh, antimicrobials, antifungals, um, those ceramides, even some you know hydrocortisone things like that that can maybe help control a little bit of what's going on on your dog's skin. And I love topical therapies. We use bathing therapy all the time here because it's just wonderful. Great, thank you so much. Yeah, you're so welcome.